Great, so we're going to quickly try to do, thank you, we're going to try to keep it really short and sharp. Uh, I'm going to try to be my friend's guru for a minute. Uh, he's uh, very kindly and open-mindedly uh, agreed to this. Uh, I, he doesn't like this particularly, uh, this quick intro. It's a very quick and not particularly understanding intro, but ex-Muslim, Buddhist, Ex oh, go on, you give it a better, a longer intro. No, 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 I, I, I'd agree with the ex-Muslim part, but I, I'm, in terms of what I believe, I, I, I keep an open mind, okay? I mean, I, I'm open to, to most religions, you know, I I haven't really necessarily pinned down, I mean, I, at the moment, I kind of, Buddhism is my favorite, but I, I keep an I keep an open mind, you know, let's let's say, uh, om ominist, Great. let's go with that. And, and I would agree that, in, interesting, ominist, everything is cool, I like that. And I, I he's clearly open-minded, because that's why he's here, right? Um, so, we want to solve a real-life problem, I don't want to be just to, you know, talk about why a religion is, a, a Buddhism is not exactly right, uh, has some good things. Uh, what is the current problem that you're trying to deal with in life? Because anything that you're dealing with, probably a million other people are dealing with. Uh, well, well, I mean, the economy is bad, so that's... <laughs> I mean, that's that's had an effect. I mean, my, my house is very cold, yeah. and all the lights are off most of the day. I only have, like, a little bedside lamp that goes on in the evening so I can read. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, I think that's probably a real-life problem sure. that affects... Fantastic. Yeah. That, I mean, it's fantastic as a point because loads of people are going yes. to be suffering what you're suffering, right? So, in I mean, terms of... more like personal problem, I... No, I think that's really good yeah. because I think it helps a lot of people. But is there a more personal thing that you want to talk about? Uh, Let's start with that one, then. Let's talk about the okay, yeah. feeling that... Uh, if I was just trying to summarize, you're feeling that you don't have enough and you don't have enough opportunities as well. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, and that's quite a common thing for uh, a person as young as yourself who just finished their degree, okay? It's hard. To, I've been in that situation as well, right? Okay, so um, I've talked about... The, I think there are a couple of things that are going to make you... If you're more settled in your thinking and you're not panicking, then you're going to be you're going to do a better job of working upwards, right? If you're panicking and you don't feel good at where you are, then you're not going to make the positive steps forward, right? So, step one is to see how rich you are already, okay? Uh, and then the way you do that, and I kind of just mentioned it off screen a second ago, which is, if you want, this is a saying of Prophet Muhammad, he said, if you want to not disregard or disrespect the beautiful things that you have, the blessings things that you have, then you should look to people who have less than you, okay? Uh, and as soon as you think that, you start realizing how many things you have and also how many advantages you have, see? So if you're feeling negative, then you go, oh, I don't have anything, and then you don't realize all the things that you could use to your advantage to go up. Yeah, I agree, 100%. Cool. Okay. Um, so, I should just say generally, um, I do like Buddhism as a surface level, but I don't, I can see it practically doesn't work in the long term, okay, in getting jobs and getting anywhere. Uh, because, and I just want to do a summary, I don't want to get into the negativity too much, but you know what I'm going to say roughly, right? You can see the only religion that's going to be extinct by 2050, by Pew Research, okay, is Buddhism. And the, re the, re the reason, I would say, is because it gives a lot of buzzwords that sound good on the surface, but they're too vague to be helpful enough to, 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 to deal with the details of real life. Um, but I'm happy for you to disagree with that. But I think that. So why why do I, why do I link the the population thing with um, Buddhism? Uh, you know, like the truth of Buddhism is because if if Buddhism doesn't deal with solve your relationship problems, then you cannot have a long-lasting relationship long enough to have a family. And family is a quite a tough thing to do, have children and things, uh, which is what you want to do, hopefully, right? Uh, hopefully, in the future, right? Maybe you're not thinking that far ahead. And then, if you don't have a long-lasting family, then you're not going to have enough, you're not going to have children, and you're not, those children are not going to pass on your ideas, because either you run away from those children, you know, like get divorced and run away from whatever, and then you don't get to 
push, you don't teach that ideology as a successful ideology. Does that make any sense? They, because they won't be impressed by it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So that was just a background, maybe a bit of a sidetrack, but I think that was kind of an important yeah, intro. Just, just the thing on the decline, I, I should mention, I mean, it has been prophesied in Buddhism that there will be a decline. Ah, yes. That is interesting, because yeah. I was reading up about that, about the Maratiya... Maitreya, yes. Maitreya, yes. right? And he um, would basically be a, a universal prophet. Uh, in principle, yes. In the, in the latter days, which is yes. a lot of Buddhists are claiming that he's going to come soon, right? Uh, well, in the, soon, yes. I mean, no, yeah. nobody has a date, but right. it's, it's been so, prophesied that there will be a massive decline. Yeah. Buddhism will be more or less uh, extinct. Yes. Um, and then there'll be, yeah, but yeah. my trail so, great. Ex so essentially I, reignite the fire, as it were. Great. Okay. Uh, and so I'm actually a follower of the Second Coming of Buddha. Did I mention that? Oh, no. <laughs> no that's a surprise. Yeah, that was the talk that I just gave. Okay. So all the different prophets, they said they're going to come in the latter days. Okay. And I'm a follower. I, I'm a follower of a person who said he's a spiritual Second Coming of all of these people. And it makes sense because if there's one God, he's not going to send lots of prophets sending us in different directions is going to send us one direction and it's a beautiful way of uniting humanity by saying this guy Mirza Ghulam Ahmed who's the second coming of Jesus is also the second coming of the Buddha so you can unite the Buddhist yes. <laughs> the the Christians the Jews if they follow Jesus they should and the Imam Mahdi who's also a world teacher anyway all of these are connected so that's the beautiful thing to add to adding right but let's just get back into the practical okay so once you realize how you have things that can you could use to your advantage then you can start working forward now the next Next step, practical step, is to uh, give things to other people, to be generous. Now, why is that a practical, useful step? It's because there's two kinds of mindset. I don't know. Uh, there's kind of the, I can't forget the word, like the abundancy mindset. Ever heard of that? Like you feel like there's lots of stuff in the world? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Right? So you can get to this sort of, sort of abundancy mindset, but when you start giving, when you don't give things to people, you become really like, oh, I don't have enough. Oh, my God. Uh, you know, uh, you, you feel, you become really stingy. But when you start giving, you let go of your stinginess and you say, and you see a practical reality that when you give a little bit you don't actually you still have a lot in fact you feel richer because you realize that you're helping people and you're still not poor and you seem to because you're more positive you're you're more positive towards the things you have right? that's one thing but that's not the end of the benefit of giving things to other people okay i mean there, I'm going to give three. The next one is it makes you happier. So psychologists tell you it makes you happier. Like there's uh, the test that I talk about when you give coffee to other people rather than buy one for yourself. You're happier giving it to other people. And that makes sense because you probably had loads of coffees before. So, and if you're rich enough to buy coffee, you're probably rich enough to buy lots of coffees. They don't, you just don't need another one, right? But the third thing, the third benefit, the real benefit, I think, oh, but one of the greatest benefits, is that if you want to make money then you have to have value inside yourself you have to be valuable in terms of your skills right now to create value you need to know how to be valued to be with other people like if you want a service you have to serve somebody right and how do you, if you're serving people then you become an expert at serving people kind of make i don't know if that's obvious right but it's not obvious to most people right so when you're serving people you become an expert at being helpful and bringing value to people and then then you can eventually start charging people for the thing so for example i teach for free and i've had so many students through that but i don't teach for free in the expectation that something's going to come back to me i just become really really good at that thing and then i can tell lots of stories about how that's worked for me but do you want to add something no no i think you hit the nail on the head yeah. cool yeah so it doesn't have to be much longer than that um but i think there's one really important thing that and I, this is something me and you agree on in terms of the westernized version of Buddhism, okay, where it fails in the next thing I'm going to talk about, and this is really important to have, right? 
and it comes back to your abundancy mindset. Uh, so in Western Buddhism, it's taught as an atheistic way of life, which is completely incorrect because Buddhism is a religion that believes in a god. I've even been told by a Buddhist monk that, and if you study a little bit, you'll find out. Do you agree that basically they believe in a god, or do you know that? Yeah, there's, there's, you can even be reborn as one if your karma's good enough. So, And there's also th such, it's not the same as a heaven, but they have what they call pure lands. Right. Uh, like, uh, especially in like Chinese Buddhism. There's, there's, a, there's a whole Pure Land school, and also in, in like the... So pure Land, is Pure Land like a Nirvana, or what? What does that mean? Well, I mean, the, the book I read um, uh, by um, the Venerable uh, Chin Kung, who died recently, uh, it's called For the Sake of All Beings, I and mean, he basically says, if you've dedicated yourself to sort of uh, the study of the Dharma, basically, there's, he says, well, there's several Pure Lands, but I've only read about the Western one. He yeah. says it's basically, it's... When you die, it's a place you go where you can basically fur further your studies and sort of uh, religious studies, that is, and then you become a, a sort of net force for good, and then you can be reborn into this world and help right. people. That's sort of the idea, the general idea. I mean, there's more to it than that, but I'm kind of trying to go at 100 miles an hour here. Sure. Okay. Um, so, um, I kind of don't, there's no evidence of this kind of reincarnation because when people become worse, you don't see more dogs coming into existence and stuff like that. Um, and the reason why I mention, I'm getting a little bit into theology, but I don't really want to go into too much, is that if you don't have a belief system, like if your idea, I agree a little bit of that, okay, because I say Buddhism originally was true, and I'll, I'll tell you how I agree with it, but if you have an idea that doesn't add up to the science or logic or proof, then you start disbelieving deep down in this idea, and you just start thinking it's a nice mystical thing to do because it's kind of fun right so I don't believe in reincarnation there's not much evidence of, but where I believe in the roots of reincarnation which is the same in Islam and Christianity or whatever this idea of being born again in Islam you have to be born again millions of times within one lifetime because you have to keep letting go of parts of your ego right or selfishness that's where it originally came from right that's what I understand right so it just got confused because Buddhism is an extremely ancient religion it can easily be confused the first writings were on stones 300 years after Buddha right so it's kind of like it's easy to be confused about some of the teachings right but anyway um, so I want you to say about but this idea of God is really important because if you want to really have an, an abundance mindset you have to realize that this universe Universe is not our control. There is a there is a God who's totally in control of it. So the Quran says that any hardship you have is designed for you, not beyond your capacity to deal with. Okay, and God is the most gracious. Like He gives us tons of stuff. So there are loads of opportunities that God creates, but we can get in a mindset where we don't have enough. We think we don't have enough, right? Okay, and so when you think everything is in perfect control, and again, let me. It shouldn't just be you think. You sh the Quran gives loads of evidence. So the Quran says, look at the universe, look at the water cycle, for example, it talks about the cloud, how it's recycling your water. There's a life support system right around you and it's keeping you alive every moment in your life. As soon as the air recycling system stops working, you would know it, right? You'd be like, oh, God, give me air. Like, but you get so much that you've neglected how great and how lucky you are to have the air, the water, and the millions of things that are keeping us alive. And even the universe inside is just it's insane, right? So when you realize there's a God, then all you realize, all you have to do every single day, and this is kind of the end of what I want to say, and you can add whatever you want, is that all your job is that you're in a sort of computer game made by God, is perfectly aware of your situation, and he, uh, God describes himself as the womb who, who, de who wants you to develop, right? So he wants you to develop, he wants you to succeed in the most important ways, right? Uh, and then all you have to do is take the next positive step every day and God will create positive opportunities. Now even if you don't know that for sure, isn't the best way to be successful to every day take a positive step? I agree, yes. Yeah. Were you going to say something? Oh no, I was just going to interest that you mentioned na nature. I mean, uh, I mean, there's certain like indigenous, uh, kind of like the Native Americans for example, where they sort of believe in the great spirit, so they essentially worship nature. Um, 
And I mean, it's interesting. I was having a discussion with someone about this. Uh, one of the people I work with, who's, who's kind of like studied anthropology, so he studied a lot of religions. Um, but I mean, he, he made. Uh, I mean, an interesting thing he said. You know, as soon as uh, like human beings stopped worshiping nature, and then you know they started worshiping like what well, Jesus, and then kind of God. I mean, it seems like. I mean, he said there was sort of an, an, an nature became neglected because things became a bit materialistic. I mean. I don't know, is there, is there, do you think there's some truth in that? No, I agree. So when you mention those ancient religions, even the Aboriginal yeah. religions, they all essentially believed in the same thing. And so I see, so when I mentioned that uh, God, uh, Allah, is known as Rahman, the root word is Rahim, which means womb. So this whole world, this universe, nature, is we are in the kind of we're being taken care of in a womb. A womb, you know, yeah. is basically a closed system where we're taking care of all our needs are taken care of. So yes, God is nature. God is, but not God is not blind. So nature is part, like like part of God. Like, we, do you kind of make sense? So like, God has created this life support system, like an, so, an emanation of God. Yeah, it's a reflection of. So the way God describes in the Quran is that uh, the universe is a palace. A, a glass palace right where God is the the force behind it but we mistake his power with nature so do you get it so like if you get a glass pane and what you see is the you what you see is um, you don't recognize that it's the power of God but you what you bump into is nature so behind it is a great power but you only get to see directly nature so nature is a reflection or I don't like to say reflection, like it's a it's a kind of a thing that blocks your way to seeing God directly, right? And that's actually not just a spiritual idea, it's become a psychological idea because uh, psychologists have now said that the greatest or most powerful antidepressant is just being in one with nature. Oh, yeah. good. <laughs> so, so basically you're agreeing with a lot of the things, basically the things I'm saying. Um, what, let's just to finish off the video, because I did say I'm going to keep it short. Uh, can you tell me one thing that you f is a takeaway that you remember that you might found, you found useful from this video? Um, I guess just trying to be of value to people, you know. I mean, that's kind of, it's something, it's something I don't know, because so I'm, I'm quite a private person, so I don't know, sometimes I can, I can kind of be a bit distant. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm always of value to people, but uh, it's, it's something I try. I try my best to be. And I think I think it's that's been like very helpful, like what you said. Yeah, yeah I think um, that's a really good point you made. The reason why Islam teaches us to be really uh, giving is because it's our nature to work. You know, distance ourselves from society and not be part of it because that's what you see in London but it's not people are evil it's just they're going to their natural inclination of just serving themselves and going to Netflix <laughs> yes I mean interestingly actually that that text I mentioned just uh, quickly close up the eight, the eight verses for training the mind it also talks about like um, being of service like at the towards the end you know it says may I offer my help and happiness to all living beings yeah. It's, it's very interesting, like that co correlation as well. Yeah, I was reading that, and I think number one should be the there's right action, right mind, or all this kind of stuff. I think it starts with right mind. Yes, I yeah, agree. I agree. Yeah. I'm not sure is that is there an order? I couldn't. I wasn't sure if there's an order because every time I check it up, people have the order in different. I mean, there there isn't really a particular order. Yeah. From, to my knowledge. Yeah. So we agree that right mind is okay, where we should it start. All, it all starts with yourself. Though. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah. And this is the, also a teaching of Islam. It's, the, it's your your actions are judged by your motives. Okay. And if you have the right intention, you can't always control the output. Always. You know what I mean? But if you keep having the right mindset, you'll be really successful. Anyway, thank you so yeah. much. I really appreciate your time. Thank, thank you for having me on your, your show again. Yeah, oh, always a pleasure. And I think people like uh, having you on because every time you or you're on, uh, lots of people watch. I so appreciate oh. it. Yeah. Thank you, thank you guys. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Stay we'll tuned. be back here next week. So well, I don't know if I'll be back here, but he'll be back here next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tried to get lots of different interesting people, but I appreciate that you're kind of hinting that you might come back. I really, I value that. Thank you. Okay.